Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Buzzing About Romance. I am Becky, and joining me for this episode is Amanda. Hi Amanda. Hi Becky. And hi Jenny. Jenny's here. Hey Becky. Um, so on this episode, um, so these are our Wednesday book club sip and discuss styling episodes. Um, this is our last Wednesday of our out of this world selections it is um and i know how happy this month has made amanda (laughs) yeah it was the right time for it for me it was just like it was like a good like i was already in that kind of like mood and it it worked out really well i do think you know as i've reflected on this month it has been good to push us outside of our comfort zones you know we learned that jenny and i need more definition (laughs) of a world didn't know i was that particular about it but now we know yeah um but i think it's really good and i do think especially for the variety of listeners that we have we probably are going to have to i'm not saying every month you guys but (laughs) we're gonna have to start to mix in a little bit more of the pnr the cozy monsters the aliens i have zero problem with that i know i know you're gonna just lead this charge (laughs) Um, so on this episode, we are reading That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon by Kimberly Lemming. Um, so I read this, I think like spring 2022. Yeah, it was like a while ago. Yeah, when I first saw it on TikTok and I was like, ooh, I, I, I want to try this and it's when I was just starting to dabble myself into these cozy monsters, because if we've learned anything, cozy monsters are my, they're my happy place with this kind of read. The more ridiculous, the better. Yes. I Um, can get on board. So we're reading this one and I'm, I'm really interested to talk about it with you guys because this was technically a reread for me. And so it's easy. It's, different to reflect on it as a reread like does it matter? did you read it to jenny first before no i have not i just remember becky like be like you need to read this you need to read this i'm like okay this was my first read of it too so yeah um so who wants to read the things to know and then we can talk about all the things i can do it okay okay so the we are discussing that time i got drunk and saved a demon by kimberly lemming um, it, the subgenre is cozy monster romance kind of rom-com. The release date was 2021, originally published as indie. It was bought by Orbit, which is, is it Hatchet? Hache. Hache book group and republished in May 23 of 2023. The tropes are force proximity, quest mission, adventure, um, faded mates, but uh, spoilery there yeah a little bit which we'll talk about and the series name is mead mishaps it's a series of standalones it's first person single pov the put out percentage is 47 percent the audio narrator is hazel addison and it is available everywhere wide um so the i did the audiobook i don't know if anybody else did the audiobook the audiobook was exceptionally well done um I really enjoyed Hazel Addison. She brought cinnamon to life. Her descriptive, her narratives were really great. Um, but, and this is goes into, I didn't think about this the first time I read the book, but I thought about this the next time that I listened to this. It was supposed to be kind of like olden days fantasy medieval-ish right i wasn't like, sure yeah. i was like yeah i was kind of confused on the yeah no electricity or running water right no but food for storage her, though well, no for her too because she's a people she's a person yeah she's a yeah, person no no i mean i mean for for her but then then she goes to other places that have running but they're water using stuff, magic right? Oh, they're okay. using magic to true. make it happen true, true, true. The, the one place does have an aqueduct system but okay. so still not i felt like the language didn't fit <laughs> no. the yeah. setting 
Um, it was overly modern. It was quirky. I also felt like the way to describe the narrative of this book was random and quirky. Like, I don't yeah, know how else to explain yeah. how she told this story other than random and quirky. That's fair. Yeah, because as I was reading it, I was definitely like, this is, I would definitely watch this if it was a TV show. Okay, I, I have a theory on Kimberly Lemming as an author. Either she has a D&D campaign and a group of really nerdy friends, and she took one of her D&D campaigns and turned it into a, a romance novel. Or she plays lots and lots and lots of World of Warcraft. Yeah, that's fair. It's one yeah. of those. Like, this is either World of Warcraft fan fiction turned into a romance novel, or she took her D&D campaign and turned it into a book. Because didn't it kind of read like a D&D campaign? I get the D&D. I, I don't know anything about World of Warcraft, so I couldn't say anything to that, but I, I totally, like, I get the D&D. Well, the very first, like, Michael told me, because I had to ask... The very first quest in World of Warcraft is you have to go kill the lynch. Mm. That's oh. The, the what? It's not World of Warcraft, oh, Diablo. Diablo. Sorry, Diablo. There's some kind oh, of. So it's lynch in the book, though, right? Yeah, yeah, it's lynch in the book. So in Diablo, no, it's in Diablo, the video game. You have to kill the oh. lynch. So, so Diablo. Maybe she's a big Diablo fan. She has to be a gamer. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, and I mean that quirkiness <laughs> would fit that it just if you think about how it goes from quest and and jenny knows this because she has a loved one that's a big video gamer the quest to quest the gathering and the raiding the side quest the side quests <laughs> okay these it, i mean it's just like yeah i am not a gamer oh no i'm yeah. not but, but i mean i totally that makes total sense yeah, to me i get I could, it like see it like dinging on the side, you know, like you got two out of four <laughs> challenges. Right? Like catching the food would have been like a side quest bonus medal or something. That's yeah. so funny though, because I was like thinking, I was thinking like mytholo mythological quests in my brain, but yeah, I didn't know about the, I didn't think about no. the gaming aspect, but that's, that totally makes sense though. That That is just where it went. Yeah. Because again, there was a bit of obscurity a bit of quirkiness to this book. And I did tell my husband that I was like, I'm pretty sure you would like this book. A hundred percent. And honestly, this is one of those books that I wish romance graphic novels oh, um, yeah. were a thing. Um, because this is a book that I wish was a graphic novel. I'd buy it in a heartbeat. Oh. That would totally work. Because the way this reads, you would catch, you know, those kids that read manga and stuff like that. They would pick this up in a heartbeat then. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you're welcome, Orbit, if you want to market it, have it turned <laughs> into a. Um, let's see here. Stacy says, thinking in that context, it's even more surprising I didn't enjoy this. Stacy didn't like the book. She didn't love it. But. And I'm curious about you, Amanda, a little bit. Did the the world building, the way they interact within the world, because there are some plot holes in this book, did that bug you? Because you love fantasy. I do love fantasy. Um, I really did, like, there were parts of it I did a really quick skim, um, just because it's, it's not necessarily, like, my favorite way to enjoy like that kind of fantasy but I mean I didn't mind it it was fun it was it was enough to just kind of like occupy my brain mm -hmm. but yeah if I if I'm if I'm like going specifically to read like a paranormal or a fantasy this probably wouldn't be something I picked up yeah um so this is a question for Jenny there is some moral ambiguity within there this is. book <laughs> And as I was reading it, and they're burning the city scene, um, and the characters show such little 
regard for innocent lives as they're burning the city. Um, <laughs> it kind of, the tones didn't match yeah. at this point in the story. Um, Jenny, how did you feel about that ambiguity there? Well, like that whole, that whole chapter, I was like, well, he's a fucking dragon. That would have been helpful information. Like, yeah. <laughs> prior to you this. didn't get um, that he was a dragon prior to like, that i figured he could he just had, like, make fire big, big like major like magical power i didn't know he was gonna be like this huge being um but yes i would agree i was like oh well yep there he just acted like a toddler and now uh, yeah like, in most instances too though it's like you're you're merging the the supernatural types because he's a demon but he's kind of a shifter yeah. too yeah so it's kind of like you're like oh wait you know and then it's just kind of like your brain has to like recalculate that yeah well yeah and it was just that the innocent people are dying but they didn't really seem to mind <laughs> right no <laughs> Well, not everybody was dead, but then they were, like, left alone for a while. I was like, oh, okay. Nobody's like, hey. I mean, I guess not. I wouldn't wake the sleeping dragon, but. Yeah. Um, What were your thoughts on um Fallon as a character? Um, again, you thought he had some kind of magical piece. Um. He felt inconsistent a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did not connect with him at all the second time reading him. I'm like, he's not swoony. He's not great. He's just there. Yeah, I mean, and I think some of that comes from not having his POV. Um, but I do agree that he was he was very inconsistent. Like, when he was in dragon mode, I was like, okay, this this tracks for me better. Okay. But the whole, like, I, I don't know. It, it The whole part where he was being kind of, like, sweet and what, I don't know. It just didn't, it didn't work for me in the fact that it just didn't really. I mean, and sometimes you can make it okay, but I don't know. I didn't, I didn't like it either. Yeah. Noah? What were your thoughts on Fallon as a character, Jenny? Yeah, it was, I mean, it was definitely more of a comedy than a romance. Yeah. Um it kind of reminded me of the Witcher and like Yennefer's oh. relationship because, yeah, yeah. like he's That's a, a good point. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, there are absolutely yeah, some Witcher vibes too. I didn't even think about the Witcher, me either. Yeah. Definite Witcher vibes. Um, one of the big plot holes for me that I struggled with. I'm just going through my list because these are the random thoughts that Becky jotted down as she listened to this audiobook. So they're all over the place, you guys. Go ahead. That's fine. Um, the heroes that were sent off for the goddess right. initially. Yeah. Plot hole. These guys were we overlooked. We got the Hunger Games now. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, they were... It was not well explored. They aren't treated very kindly. And they have no empathy for them. They're like, sucks to be you, bye. They just... Yeah, I know. And then she just shoots one in the stomach. Yeah. She's just like, okay. I mean, which, which, I mean, I don't have problems with violence in my fantasy or paranormal, but it, again, inconsistent. Yeah. Well, it, she just shoots them. So again, where was that fun quirkiness that yeah, was right. the rest of the vibe, right? Well, and like why they were having that whole conversation, I'm like, you got you got stuff you need to be doing like can this oh, yeah. wait? <laughs> um and so this was kind of rom commy, obviously some of the jokes landed and again i don't know if it was the audio versus eyeball reading oh yeah some of the jokes did not land i was like this, this wasn't funny that was dumb don't be stupid like, so I don't know. It might have landed better in your own pacing of reading, but right. in audio, I spent a lot of time going, okay, not funny. Yeah, and yeah. I think that was part of the ridiculousness. I said this was, like, the perfect amount of ridiculousness yeah. to you um, because, like, 
it, again, it's like a TV show I would have watched. I'm like, this is like this is over the top, <laughs> ridiculous. Um, yeah. So just staying to the good stuff. Okay, well, let's talk okay. about Cinnamon, our protagonist. She's a spice farmer, specializes in cinnamon. Yeah. The names I, killed which, me. I have to bring um, this up because I think this is where Jenny's going with this. Oh, probably not. She notes that she has tons of fields, but never says the word orchard. And as we all know, the cinnamon comes from the bark of trees. And it's the whole lemon thing again. Oh. Well, see, that, that was the thing. I was like, I was sitting there and then I'm like, hey, does uh, cinnamon grow on trees? Yeah. And he's like, uh, it's bark. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. I mean, he I didn't even think about that. And you're so right. I mean, Fallon talks about stripping the bark off the tree that he got the cinnamon. I mean, yeah. so that was technically right. But as she's describing her fields and fields of cinnamon. Yeah, because she's like running through them. I mean, they like, break a tree. Like, yeah. It's an orchard of trees, yes. not a field of trees. I don't know. You really need not. Oh, the nachos. The nachos bothered me so much. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Like <laughs> the language doesn't work and then they have nachos. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was, I, I told Jeremy about this. I was like, I was like, they have nachos. And he was like, what are you talking about? So then I'm explaining the whole premise of the book. And he was like, uh, okay. See, now it's like Monty <laughs> Python. Like, it's just like, yeah, yeah, it's just a bunch of quirky, like, yeah, nerdy stuff. Random together. and yeah. quirky. Those are the words of the book. <laughs> Um, you know, because corn would have, to make nacho chips, been in medieval wherever they are, that the same place that grows cinnamon. All that well, stuff they, works they, the they same, right? A, a very interesting environment. Yeah. Like, I mean, which yeah. I get. It's it's fantasy. You can kind of you can kind of work with it, but if you're going to lean that much on the real world or things that sound like the real world, then you can, you have to, there has to be some level of, yeah, you know, correlation. So like the whole plot is Sin's world in her world, they worship the goddess. And then she learns that the goddess is actually an evil lynch enslaving peaceful demons, which set up this grand adventure. And I don't feel, so this is kind of like, an old timey road trip romance. And I love a road trip romance, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I love that. So we get this adventure and I like the adventure, but this is where I go. Oh, are we just reliving a video game here? Yeah. I could, as you were talking, I could see that like, even like the trekking through the different like environment that like, there's even a part where she explains like the way their world looks. And I'm like, didn't you feel like okay. there was a map up in the corner yeah, I did. following your like little line of footsteps of all the places you yeah, went? You got to go here and then we're going to backtrack here. Right. <laughs> you almost wish they had like the internet so they could have Googled for some <laughs> shortcuts or side quests or how to get the special pieces or something. Right. I don't know. Yeah. I just kept going back to, is this a video game scripted <laughs> in my romance novel? <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's so random. <laughs> Amanda's going to be like, you guys are never allowed to read any more fantasy. <laughs> no, I mean, no, I totally get it, though. I mean, just because I don't know that much about video games, I just didn't put that together. Yeah. But no, it makes it makes total sense. Um. OK, so let's talk about the sexy times in this book a little bit. Um. OK, so the cover is cute and quirky, but when they have the sexy times... Oh, it's yeah. like light BDSM. <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. I have that as a note somewhere. This is, it, it's very, uh, very close to some light BDSM. I was just like, ooh, that demon dragon guy is spicy. And like, it just goes from like, da -da 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 -da. Yeah. <laughs> right. He, like full on edges her and sucks the soul out of her body. And then they go out to have a battle, which is not really a battle. And then, you know, and they come back to it later. I'm like, okay. Um, 
so did you like Sin's voice in the book as the narrator of the story? Did you like that? I actually wish this book had been in third person. Yeah, I could see that, um, especially listening to an audio. I think I could like eyeball reading it, kind of like switch back and forth, if that makes sense. Um, looking at things like as you would see them yeah. outside of her view. Yeah. I just feel like the pacing, the the interactions within the world, because her narrative is funny and fun mm -hmm. and you know she brings her own personality into the narrative and i think that did us as a reader a disservice in figuring out like he's a dragon or how things are going to happen yes. and how they're yeah. moving in the world the beast that catches the crayfish for her and stuff i don't know is it a horse is it a dog What what is it Oh, I, I don't really know. I, I neither do I. But don't you wish that in third person it would have been okay yeah. then to give a description yeah. of exactly like, you know, the beast is a mix of X Y Z. Yeah. Which. Yeah. But I think in, it would have worked. But in her voice, it's something that's always been in her world, so she's not giving us the description. Right. Yeah, no, it, make, it makes sense. And then I think too, even with like some of the side parts with the other, when the, when all of the other people get brought in from whatever the place they go and free, like the, the werewolf and the, the snake thing, which let me tell you right now that I almost stopped it right there. <laughs> it's a good thing we were not on the phone this morning because the girl child, I was on the phone with Shannon the girl child went on a 25 minute rant about how stupid people are about snakes and dumb and that they don't know things. And I'm like, it's, I mean, I'm sure they're totally like fine. I'm just, I have been terrified since birth. I can't get rid of it. I'm sorry. It's, it's fine. just, they are not for me, but I just stay away yeah. from them. Yeah. To each their own, you know, but, but yeah, she's very passionate about it. Um, I'm, I'm happy, but yeah, no, I almost lost it with that, with that part, but but I feel like that would have third person would have worked better there too, because they brought in so many characters. There was so much happening. And that was like, honestly, like one of the parts I kind of skimmed yeah. because I was like, this is too much going on right now. Yeah. Like at like 60% of the book. And I was like, Oh wait, how yeah. many more people are we adding to this? Yeah. Now um, so. Stacy asks, has Kimberly written a contemporary urban fantasy rom-com? No, because well, I think that you could classify her new one that's coming up as urban fantasy rom-com. But it's like a fever dream. It's mixes time travel. and that a more sci-fi-ish? Yeah, it's a little more sci-fi. It it's, okay. like, it's like a fever dream of the Wizard of Oz meets Dungeons and Dragons meets Jurassic Park. Okay. Okay. It's chaotic, like, I also wonder if maybe she has ADHD, the way it's written. Oh, I, yeah. Because it's, okay. oh, look, we're over there, shiny. Oh, wait, shiny over here. I mean, yeah. I mean, that would work even for this one. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and her new one comes out in February. I have an advanced copy. I've read half of it. I'll let you know how the other half goes. I'm struggling with it because it's a it's 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 a lot different. Did you read all three books in the series? I have read this one and the time I got drunk and yeeted that one. Okay, that's number two. Yes. Yeah, that's her her best friend and Felix, and then the third one is her the other dragon and her sister. Yeah, I haven't read the last one. So, and I think her brother, one of her brothers is the Christmas book. Oh, okay. I didn't realize there was a Christmas one. There's a little Christmas okay. novella. Billy or Cumin, Some... which killed me. Okay, so... well, let's talk about the family real quick because... <laughs> right? That's, I was like, oh no. <laughs> They're spicy, that family. Oh, wow, go. That was funny. 
that was good. I definitely saw the like blues, blues, white cinnamon, paprika. <laughs> I also did have a fever while I was reading this book, so maybe that helped. Maybe that helped. Maybe that helped, but now that's all I'm going to see is cinnamon and paprika. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> now a little cumin. <laughs> so funny. Yep. Um, what did you think? Well, first of all, okay, I I, I listened to the epilogue because I spent a credit on this, so I'm going to listen to the whole thing because I got to get my money's worth, right, people? Right. Yeah. Um, since family's quick acceptance of Fallon, I was not convinced. Right. Um, like he literally just walked in her house. Yeah. And he had threatened them previously. Like yeah. thematic. <laughs> and then we're just like, oh, we're so happy you're here. And what? then also too, like, like she was in no hurry to go back to her family. Like they all think she's gone on this dangerous quest. And she's just like, we're just like, we're gonna stay on the on an island for two months and you know, whatever. <laughs> Like well, after she's already like, been unconscious, right? Too. And yeah. 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 I don't I was like, okay. I don't know. I just was like, that was an epilogue that didn't even need to exist. It didn't <laughs> even need to be a chapter. It just didn't need to happen. But I did I I will say though, I while it didn't really work, like it was over very quickly, I did want to see her go back to her family though. So I am at least glad I, that she went I back to her agree. family. Okay. Um I it's did just end. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna say it. it. I'm not gonna say it like it was what I wanted. Like, but I was happy to see her go back to her. She family. does get in the door to her yes. family. Well, and her family was pretty chaotic. Like, I was like, "Hey, that'd probably be our family if we lived in the medieval with dragons and demons and stuff." And I also too like I wanted to know more about what her mom was. Like, I thought that was yeah. gonna play a bigger part into it right because her mom's like a a minstrel a, the storyteller for the village bard the bard there's the, the bard. word yeah but they never ever define it so again plot hole we need like a little bell to ring every time we come up with a plot hole you know like the I echo mean, we never have you could just ding jenny yeah <laughs> whenever i say plot hole you can just ding but to get her a bell <laughs> little hotel I'm bell. like i'm sure i could come up <laughs> <laughs> no cowbells though those are obnoxious no. um okay so did anyone else feel that cinnamon without fallon would have been too stupid to live Because it was like, look, there's a trap. And she fell in it. Like, I'm fairly certain Shaggy and Scooby are smarter than Cinnamon. <laughs> even <laughs> even if they ate all the edibles, they were smarter than Cinnamon. Well, I mean, yeah. she's, she's been sheltered. Yeah. And she does have skill. But yeah, she's a little too trusty. But she did also get in a carriage with a demon. Like, yeah. Well, and how many, I mean, how many times is she rescued in the book? Like, we repeatedly are seeing him having to rescue her. Yeah, I mean, and I think, again, like, we talk about, I mean, and like, I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, hate on the book, because I actually thought it was a lot of fun, but. Totally the fun. inconsistency. Totally fun. Like, like she's inconsistent, because yeah. you see her, she's knocking a bully in the face, she's using a bow and arrow, but then again, she can't, like get out of her own way in a in a lot of the right like she confronts scenes. the guy that is yeah. like holding the werewolf dude like trying to get the werewolf to shift and yeah. i'm like again you got stuff to do adhd like yeah. maybe let's not side quest right now like right main quest <laughs> no time for side quests <laughs> listen i loved the book i loved it the first time i, I read it too. i yeah. really enjoyed it the second time but it was obvious to me this is her first book, right? This is oh. was her debut. Oh, okay. I, didn't, I don't think I realized that was I totally her first either. one. It was her debut. It oh. reads like a debut. There are just small little things that, you know, as a reader, I think that it's important that we point out that you can have a highly enjoyable, successful book. Yeah. But then we have these little things that, like, 
how much stellar would have this book been had we yeah. not gone on side quests? You know, had yeah. he not had to rescue her like 17 times. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay. And I will say, because some of the other books that we've read this month, it has felt like the endings wrap up really quickly and just all of a sudden there's resolution, right? Like, everything's great. But then we have to go on to the next book to see how they resolve the bigger issue, right? Right. I felt like this book actually wrapped up really nicely. It was a little convenient how it wraps up, right? Yeah. Yeah, because um, I got, I mean, you're like, I think you said we were like 60% when he like first shifts to a dragon. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, we still got two cups to find. Like, um, we're going to find those or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that it, however, how she wrote this and the way she wrapped it up, it created a very easy, short, satisfying read. Yes. I felt like this was palatable fantasy for those people that are not fantasy readers. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think that's a the good way to describe it. Because um, Stacy actually said, you know, she's a huge fantasy reader. Yeah. And loves the aliens. She struggled with this book. It was not for her. But I don't think it was fantasy enough for her. Yeah, and I think it was, and like I said, I feel like it was almost trying to pull in from, trying to pull in a lot of different elements. Like you're getting some some standard like P and R, what what we would refer to as like P like paranormal romance, like twenty years ago or something, but mixed with like a cozy, mixed with like a fantasy, mixed with like a mythology. I felt like there was a a lot going on. Yeah, for someone who reads a specific type of yeah. I do think that this is a great entry point for someone who's not sure yeah. if they would like fantasy or if they're not sure if they would like monster romances. Yeah. I feel like this is, you know, if you aren't sure the door is for you, try <laughs> this demon. Yeah. <laughs> Just an idea. I mean, uh, yeah. it works. You know, I don't. I don't know if that's going to get you to the door, but you know, it's a good, good start. Yeah, Everybody there's get definitely to the a few more steps you need to take. <laughs> um, okay, I'll give you the balloon animal shifters to the door. Okay, okay. Demon balloon animal shifters door. Right? Don't you think? I can't read the yeah. balloon animals. But... Jenny says no. Um, okay. Chemistry, we didn't really talk about the relationship of Fallon and Cinnamon. Um, do you think they had good chemistry together? They really couldn't stop. They liked. Yeah. They were horny for each other. I mean, yeah. I mean, it was there was definitely that attraction, like, right off the bat, which you find out later is he he knows that she's his mate, but he doesn't tell her until what the... Ninety percent into oh, the yeah. book or whatever. We don't even yeah. get you know? that they're faded until like ninety-two yeah. percent or something. Yeah, which I mean, I would have, I, I would have preferred to know. Like, I mean, that's when I would have liked either the third person or a little snippet of his POV so that you know what's going on in his brain. Yeah, a little bit. I agree. I think that would have helped with some of the plot holes because I <laughs> felt like it was. It was like a loot box. What's it your was. ending? He hit the loot box and out came yep. faded mates. Like, I don't know. Like, he opened the treasure chest and it shined <laughs> so big. And out came, look, uh, your faded mates. Man, I could have done, like, a whole sound effect for it. <laughs> I tell you, this whole book, all I kept thinking was, am I playing a video game? So funny. Well, like it, it also reminds me of like some animations that like are just slapstick funny and like make fun of yeah. everything and anything yeah yeah it kind of had and it didn't it wasn't but it kind of had a choose your own adventure vibe 
Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it was really just enough to get us to the next part of the quest. It wasn't, you know, nothing went in too deep, right? Right. Yeah. Like, we don't know about Cinnamon's mom. We, you know, didn't find out they were fated till the end. We don't know that he's a demon until 60 some percent or a dragon. Yeah. So. Um, but they had good chemistry, I thought. I mean, they were horny for each other. Cinnamon yeah, I mean, liked you, his abs. You definitely, like, it definitely comes across that they're totally attracted to each other. So. Yeah. I did like that they didn't have to be, like, doing the same thing all the time. Like, they're not with each other 24-7. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But she cooks in the, like, on the ship, and he is not, like, right there beside right her the whole there. time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there definitely was some independence of character within this story. Yeah. But I think Which that's is good, so it doesn't feel like it's a total like kidnapping. Yeah. There. Um, did anyone have a favorite scene they want to talk about before we go to thumbs up, thumbs down? I'm trying to think what my favorite was. Honestly, like I don't know. I like I like it when he finally turns into a dragon. Like yeah. because I was like, okay, I need to know what, what his other powers are. I mean, I could have used it earlier, but I did I did like that part. Yeah, I think I like the dueling dragons, and then she like jumps off her horse, who is now a Pegasus. Yeah. Yeah, like, right. um, <laughs> I for some reason maybe that was the line for me. I'm like, I don't know if I can believe this. <laughs> That's the line, Jenny. I, oh. I was definitely not like. In alien books, this, but... it's time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> in this book, it's the horse is all jumping, of a sudden a Pegasus. No, <laughs> no, jumping off your Pegasus onto a dragon. Oh, jumping off the Pegasus to the dragon. Yeah. yeah. That's your line. Yeah. And staying on the dragon. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean. Okay. And this is going to sound horrible and y'all can, you know, think it sounds horrible. I actually really like when they burn the city. Because I was oh, like, no, I... just burn it all. Yeah. Burn it down. Well, I mean, that's right in line with where I, where my favorite part is, is yeah. when he finally turns into a dragon. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, <laughs> it's pretty much my, pretty much the same for me. I, so. like, I mean, yeah, I can't fault all. you there because, like, yeah. there's definitely like a religious piece with the whole like temples and the mages, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, just burn it down. Yeah. Um, we it, can start over. It just felt like one of those moments where you're kind of like, "Fuck it, I'm done. Burn it <laughs> down." <laughs> You know, I have moments like that about my house. I'll be like, I'm tired of this. Yep. Let's just burn it down. I don't want to clean yeah. anymore. So it kind of, I liked that. Anyway, um, <clears throat> anything else of the time, that time I got drunk and saved a demon that we'd like to talk about before we do our thumbs up, thumbs down? Okay. Um, Jenny, thumbs up, thumbs down. Would you recommend this book? I would. If you're, I, thumbs up. I really enjoyed it. Like I said, it was it's completely ridiculous. If you were looking for a serious book, a feels book, this is not the book you're looking for. Yeah. Like this is I need the furthest thing from reality. Yeah. Plastic comedy. Yeah. It's kind of the perfect escape right now, as you know, yes. we're all kind of all wishing it was next Wednesday, that we wish it was a week yeah. from now. Um, this is kind of that perfect escape outside of contemporary. Yep. Amanda, thumbs up, thumbs down from you? Thumbs up for me, too, um, for that exact reason. Like, I, I read this yesterday. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't start it until, you know, yesterday. I read it all at once. It was fun. It was a really good distraction. Um, yeah, I mean, like you said, Dave, don't, don't expect to go into it with anything serious. But if you're looking for something fun, some intro to monster or even paranormal or fantasy, I think it's a good place to start. Yeah. It's a thumbs up for me, too. And again, I'll keep recommending it. I think that it has a lot of value in the genre. The story was really good. And it reads so fast. It's yeah. perfect escapism. Um, but also, I think, and I think that this is why the covers work as well as they do, even the original covers work as well as they do. I think this is great for new to romance younger readers. So, like, yeah. my girl child who is a gamer, who loves the quest of a video game and all of that kind of stuff, 
this is the kind of book I think that would help her fall more in love with this genre. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because this is like, you know, it's chaos and a little bit of everything. So if you're a gaming person or you have a gamer person in your life and you want them to read romance, read this book. I I think this would be a really fun audio book to listen to on a car trip. If, oh, God. Like, so funny. If you're okay with, like, not safe for work stuff um, yeah. with whoever's in your car. But, yeah. The audio yeah, was fantastic. Hilarious. And it, it really felt like almost like a troubadour telling me their story of the adventure done in the first person. And again, I think that's kind of why I wanted the third person vibe a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. So it felt more of like the troubadour telling the story. Um, but overall, like the audiobook is exceptional and it is done. The narrator is a woman of color. So she has the sass and the, you know, pieces that you expect that fit with cinnamon's character. Um, yeah, cinnamon is definitely sassy. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Oh my god. Because <laughs> even if, if even if she is too stupid to live, like yeah. she doesn't know she is. No, she's no. like I'm good. <laughs> she has the confidence of a middle aged white man. Yeah. Like she just keeps going, which <laughs> is why she falls in the traps. Yeah. Good point. Um. Okay. So if people liked this book. Or they want similar vibes to this book. Do you have any recommendations for them? I only oh, I had one with the same vibe. And then I have one if somebody doesn't necessarily like this and they want something a little closer to a normal paranormal. Okay, so, go for it. But which got? I know you already had Molly and the Minotaur by B. Gallo, I yeah. think is totally that same vibe as this. And a little more small town you get a minotaur the book is really fun if you haven't read it um and you like this book i think you would really like that book and then 100%. if you you know if you wanted a little more of the less funny quirky i would definitely recommend the darken you series by suzanne wright it's about demons it also has a level of funny but it's a little darker um you also get demons that that have like special powers that are you know some are like hellhounds, some are angels of death, some are other things like harpies and whatever, but you get more of that kind of grittier vibe for like an urban fantasy or paranormal. Yeah. So those are my only two. Um, Stacy says she recommends G.A. Aiken or Beck McMasters for dragon shifter romances. Yes. G.A. Aiken is also Shelley Lawrenston who writes the Badger and the, um, those series. Those so, yeah. series. Um, I think that this falls into line with the Morning Glory Milking Farm series by C.M. Nicosta. Um, Muscles and Monsters by Ashley Bennett. That series is fantastic. Um, the Orc from The Office, which... You guys, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I need to read that next. <laughs> it's Kate Pryor. Um, absolute Shrek vibes. Like, just... And it's an orc, and Leah and I have talked about orcs. I was going to say, I remember you and Leah talking about this one. Um, so this might be for you millennials. Um, Titan by Jillian Graves. I read this. The audiobook is exceptional. It is a daddy dom, so there is some power play and BDSM in it. But she wrote it based on fan fiction from the Gargoyles cartoon that used to be on Disney. <laughs> Yes. I remember you talking about that and I've had it on my TBR forever, but didn't you say that one had a little more feels to it though? It does. It does have a little okay. bit more feels to it. It's a little bit more emotionally taxing. Um, Dear Monster Claws by Maeve Black. Um, she falls in love with Satan at Christmas time. Um, and his penis is like a candy cane. And peppermint flavored. Santa's a demon. Did you not know that? Santa is Satan. Santa, Please. Satan. Oh, um, I mean. Monster Pucker by Cleo Evans. Again, it's a Yeti and a yeah. uh, Krampus. Um, the Fairhaven Falls series by Honey Phillips. Orcs, Minotaurs. Um, it's, it's funny and delightful and nothing serious like yeah 
nothing series. And the Sweet Monster Treats by Ava Ross. Again, there's Sweet a little bit of everybody treats. in that. <laughs> yeah i mean that one sounds that sounds amazing you guys so. I, the orcs are fun maybe we need to do an orc book yeah you know do it. so you all can be like you're gross i'll, I'll read it <laughs> um you say that now but <laughs> if you put it on the schedule and i sign up for it i will read I it i know you will you're so good about that <laughs> uh stacy says read all of these Jenny read them all in you the did. vacuum and the vacuum, which we are never going to live down. That's your Megan Quinn, isn't it? <laughs> I still have, Oh, well, yeah. I guess I lied. I couldn't read all the Megan Quinn books. <laughs> Twitch. Well, oh, the first book. <laughs> um, January Bell does a good cozy fantasy romance intro also. Um, and I agree with that. Now, speaking of Megan Quinn and Candy Canes. So we've been having Silent Book Club. And oh, they're yeah. going really well. If you're a member of Patreon, uh Make sure you even join our free tier because starting for Clear the TBR, we're going to open that up to the free tier. But I've been hosting these um, silent book clubs, Mondays and Tuesday nights at random, and they're going really well. Like, I'm actually getting reading done and not doom scrolling. And then we spend about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour chatting afterwards. Um, but Jen Ellen was asking about the Megan Quinn Christmas book. I've seen it. I've seen a lot of people talking about it. And she said, I was on TikTok and Megan Quinn was using a candy cane to talk about it. And she's like, please tell me. And so I had to download the book and I looked it up for her. There is a candy cane scene. So food is not your thing. That's not the book for you. But then it said I was reading. Then it said I was reading that book on my Goodreads. I had a message in my inbox from a listener that was like are are you really reading that like are you okay is this a call for help <laughs> I'm like no sorry oh my god i love that they know this <laughs> yeah. so i love it apparently if my goodreads ever says i'm reading megan quinn that's my sign that things are not okay that is funny <laughs> i was like no there Anyway, um, yes, if anybody needs fun Christmas monster romance wrecks, I have a few. Dear Monster Claws, Monster Pucker, they were great Christmas monster romances. Yeah. They made my Christmas last year. I mean, because who doesn't love the idea of Krampus and a Yeti just railing you until you smile? Jenny's <laughs> face. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Jenny. Uh, I'm always red. Anytime I laugh, I'm red. So I'm constantly red on these episodes. I promise I'm not sunburned. Like I'm sure people think they're like, man, she must just be in the sun all the time. Yeah. I mean, you do live in Florida, so. I, but I never go outside. <laughs> Jenny doesn't either. Neither does, neither does the girl child. She's a nice pasty white. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you for joining us for this out of the world, the last of our out of this world episodes and for celebrating a whole month of cosmic adventure reads with us. We hope you found some new favorites to add to your shelves, but don't go too far because we are back on Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a lively chat about the books we love so much. We simply will not accept any criticism on them. Like if you say they're not good, you're wrong. Yes. It's true. And I venture to guess some fantasy and paranormal wrecks might be coming our way from Amanda in that episode. That might be the only way I can narrow it down to three. Is it because it's books that we haven't already talked about this month? That oh. might be the only way I get there. Okay. So. That's fair. Um, and so, yeah, I think the majority of us are going to be on it. It'll be, we each are going to give our three books that we refuse to set, accept any cr criticism on. So, yeah. Um, and next Wednesday, we are going with Cozy Fall Vibes in November. So we are diving into Take It or Leaf It by Lainey Hatcher. Um, and Amanda already read this book, so, and she's been yes, recommending it. and I can't it. be on that episode, so just know that I love this book. Okay. Um, I have anniversary dinner that night, or so otherwise I would totally be there, but... 
I love that book. Okay. Um, so again, we're back Sunday night, 9 p.m., and then next Wednesday, 9 p.m., with Take It or Leaf It by Lainey Hatcher. Until then, keep those TBR stacked, and happy reading, everybody. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes. 